Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com and this video is about working with Mongoose. So in our last video, I showed you how to connect your Mongoose to, uh, well, how to create a, a Node JavaScript project, connect Mongoose, and um, yeah, how to, to use Mongoose. Now in this video, I just want to talk about the syntax for Mongoose. So for example, here we have the find function, right? And the typical um, syntax usually is for a mongoose function is you have your commands to your queries, your whatever, your data that gets passed in first and at the end is a callback. And the callback gets run once the command is complete. So that's one way to do it. But mongoose is designed that if you don't include the callback, so if I take this callback out, okay that it will instead return a promise okay so I could do that and it can return a promise which means there's two ways that I could deal with it okay if I which may be preferable okay I could use dot then syntax so I'd be like dot then and then this would be uh, the data from the command and then I would pass that into a function and then we say console log data and then if I wanted to see the, uh, if there was an error, I would just do then do a dot catch. Dot catch error. Okay, and the error then goes into this function. And would console.log error. <coughs> okay, so it's just dot then syntax. Because what happens is whenever something returns a promise, that promise can then be captured through a, the dot then syntax, which means dot then means run this function when take the data that's passed in that we received from the promise when the promise resolves and run this function. If there's an error, run this function. So if I go run this function, let's just find it. Uh, there we go, node db.js. Uh, what did I do here? What module was it looking for? Oh, am I in the wrong folder? I'm in the wrong folder, aren't I? Yes, I am. So let me open up a terminal in here and node db.js. And see, it still works, okay? Even though this should say error. It still works, okay? So I don't have to put the callback inside the function if I don't want to. Because Mongoose realizes that nowadays people moved away from the callback syntax into promises and gave you that option. But if you like the callbacks, you can do the callbacks. And since it has promises, that means you can go even a step further and do a sync await. Now a sync await though, I can't just do it top level like this. So if I wanted to do a sync await, I'd have to create a function. So const <coughs> find all equals a sync. And the way this would work, is that this would get the data. Oh, actually async, await. Actually, I don't even need to pass anything in there. You just have to mark it an async function. That means, now what this async function does, it says, hey, anything that returns a promise, you can use the await keyword. So I can be like const data equals dog dot find. And then I just take Right now, what's going to happen is it'll cause, like right now, it won't work. So watch what happens if I do it now. Console.log data. It's, I'm just going to get promise. So let's invoke the function, find all. So if I run this, I'm just going to get like promise. Okay, and what happened there? Okay, yeah, so you get back the query object, that is the promise object, and it's like, ah, I don't know what to do with this. So you don't want that. What you want it to do is to wait till the promise resolves. So you want to put the await keyword in front of it, and that tells JavaScript, hey, don't just take the promise back, wait for the promise that this thing returns to resolve. Once that resolves, store the result in data. Okay, and see this looks all pretty clean. 
but you have to do it in a function. Okay, there's no way to do a sync await currently outside of a function in Node.js. You can do that in Deno, but Deno is not really the standard. Let's see, now it works again. It gets me the, the one dog in the database. Okay, so just to recap, three ways to do it, same thing. <coughs> First, there's the callback method. So I do dog.find, I put in what I'm looking for, an empty object, and then I pass in a callback that's error data. And we can console.log or do whatever you want with the data in the callback, the function that you pass in. You can, that's a callback. Then there's the promise dot then method, which would be dog dot, well, what you would do is you would do dog dot find, then you would just pass in the query, no callback. So then you would just use dot then to do what you want to do. So dot then, um, console.log data. So it's, they're, these are all doing the same thing. And then if I want to catch the error, you always want to try to catch the error because that helps you debug. Catch, then you do dot catch, error, console.log error. So again, the idea is if you don't put a callback, it returns a promise, and there are two ways to handle a promise. And the other way you can handle a promise is, is a sync await. In that case, you have to create a function. So const find all equals a sync function. And then here what we do is we'll just do const dogs equals dog dot find. And we need to put a sync in front of it. Now the only downside to not a sync, a wait in front of it. And the only downside to this console.log dogs <coughs> is that it won't catch errors. So if you want to catch an error in this syntax, you have to do a try catch block. So wrap that in curly brackets, put the word try in front of it, then create a catch block. And the way a, a try catch block works is that it'll run code that's in the try block. If anything throws an error inside of the try block, it'll automatically run the catch block. So it's basically, if the catch block, think of it as, if there's an error, run this code. If there's no error, don't run this code. That's the catch block. Try this code says, try this code. Any error in this code will trigger the catch block. That's essentially how that works. So let me just save this so the formatting's a little bit nicer. But yeah, you'll see that all three of these do the same thing. So again, the callback syntax, the dot then syntax, and the async await syntax. And again, once you create the function, you actually have to use the function. So find all, okay, e any of these work. I personally like this syntax the best. I do think it reads the best, as far as trying to under easily understand what's going on. But all three of them work pretty well. So I'm gonna kill the previous server connection no db.js and where did I get an error? I think I have some curly bracket problems here. So let's see that that curly bracket. That's that curly bracket. And that's that curly bracket. This is line 44, so I guess the problem's over here. Curly bracket there, yeah. Oh I see. This doesn't belong in there. This is supposed to go in here. Because you're still passing a callback into the catch and then blocks. The log error. There we go. Save. Let's just hit save on this real quick. There we go. That's cl much cleaner looking. Okay. And see, it fi each time it just fi gives you the same information. And this goes for all the different mongoose functions, okay? The callback can replace, any callback that's passed at the end of any mongoose function can be replaced with a callback, a promise, 
with either the dot then syntax or the async await syntax. So yeah, that's just a neat thing. Again, does do all instances of callbacks have that feature? No. This is something that Mongoose built in, so basically it checks to see if there is a callback parameter. And if not, what it does, it decides to return the information as a promise. Thank you, Mongoose developers, for throwing that in there, because that is certainly nice to have options. Okay, always read the documentation of any library you're working with, but again, this just shows you sort of the three ways we can deal with asynchronous operations in Mongoose. And also it's a nice trip down history lane, because again, once upon a time, this was the way you did everything, then they created the promise object, which allows us to do this. And eventually people wanted something even better and they created the async await syntax, which allows us to treat promises like this. And that's a nice brief history down asynchronous JavaScript. I'll see you guys later. You guys have a great day and enjoy.